Hey, how's everybody doing? How's everybody holding up? You got your thinking caps on? Good. We're talking laying out sheets. Not 300 count Egyptian cotton, you know, sheets. We're talking, we're talking uh, Revit design sheets. Now, okay, so let me read verbatim and we'll get through this. Throughout this chapter, you have created different kinds of views, including area plans, schedules, and legends. Eventually, you will need to lay those out on sheets so they can be printed or exported as PDF or DWF files and sent to others for review. Creating sheets is easy. As you've already seen, you can create, and it's not that easy. Don't let the text fool you. It's not that easy. Creating sheets is easy, per se. As you've already seen, you can create sheets through a sheet list schedule. You can also create sheets by right-clicking the sheet node in the project browser and selecting new sheets in the context menu, or you can create new sheets by clicking on the sheet icon in the view tab. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Um, in the sheet, in, through a sheet list schedule, right, here's the sheet list schedule. We can select the sheet and then create new sheet. That's one way, right? That was the one way they explained it to us. Um, that was through the, um, the schedule. Now, there's also the way to do it through the uh, project browser in the sheet node. So if we went to um, the sheet node, and right mouse click, click it within the context of that, you'll get the contextual uh, pull-down menu, and you can create a new sheet that way. And you could also go up to the, uh, the new sheet from the um, view tab. So again, view, we create many views, and you can't in this particular view. But you see, the certain views you can't create in this sheet, because I'm in a sheet view, I can't create another uh, floor plan here. But you can see here, uh, sheet creates page for document set. Create the sheet view for each sheet in the construction document set and place multiple drawings or schedules on each sheet view. When you add sheets to the project, they're listed in the project browser under Sheets All. Okay, so that's the ways in which you can create them. That one, last one, is in the View tab. Regardless of which method you use to create them, the following sections will walk you through laying out these views on sheets and show you how to manipulate each view further once it's placed on a sheet. Adding the area plan. In the following exercise, you will continue to use the C18 sample building start or the metric equivalent from the uh, Books Companion web shop site. I'm using the finished version. I just uh, deleted everything off the sheet. Uh, open the G1 level area plan. G101 level area plan sheet in the view window by double clicking it in the project browser. Now let's add your first view. The G101, the G101 level 1 area plan. This is G102. This is G101. Let me close G102. Now we have a G101. Let me give this book its props real quick. Take a peek. As you can see. You can take a follow. You follow that if you'd like, right? If you want to follow it on Facebook, take a peek at what they have to offer you. I would recommend buying the book. This particular author has a fantastic library of instructional books on all sorts of subjects. This may not be the platform for you. There's other platforms. Wait till we get to have a source manage. Oh, my Lord. You're going to love that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, now. Uh, okay, so let's get back to this. Level 1 area plan sheet in the view window by double clicking in the project browser. Now, let's add your first view. The usable area plan for level 1. To do this, simply drag and drop it from the project browser onto the sheet. The view will show at the proper scale and with a view title already established. And that, in and of itself, is a powerful thing. Again, the bi-directional associativity of it, so they don't have to keep changing the name and the number and, and the sequence and, and editing the text manually. It's not designed to do it that way. And when the contractor gets it, usually these are all exploded into their basic primitives, and that's exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get the result of all the smart metadata uh, no longer associated with it, and you're going to have to deal with that fact. Reconstructing it back to a little more intuitive uh, and easier to work with is uh, something that you should utilize. You should utilize these tools. You, you're basically throwing the model right back at the designer. Here's the chalk, and then you redesign it right back the other direction um, to conform to the initial design. And any discrepancies along the way are identified, and, and the computer makes it so much more powerful. You're emulating it, right? And then it comes to fruition. So, again, um, I know I generalize it. There's a little more to it than that, but general concept you get. 
Now, Mike, let's not deviate from center. To do this, simply drag and drop the usable area schedule. To do this, simply drag and drop it from the project browser onto the sheet. The view will be shown at the proper scale. Let's say, look, we'll drag it over. You see a little plus symbol by the cursor. And then you'll have it in your fingers. Oh, I'm sorry, I grabbed the schedule. I'm, I'm supposed to grab the usable area plan. I take that back. It was level one, right? Level one. Let's drag that out. As you can see, it's uh, it's it's there at the right scale. Now, let me just make sure I put it in the right uh, place. Hold on a second. Let me skim ahead a little bit. Does uh, it actually give it to us? No, eh, not really. It doesn't really show us how to lay it out. Well, yeah, I guess it does. It's G102. Right, this one here doesn't contain any details on it. Let's just put it right in the center here. Uh, yeah, I'll put it right in the center. And we're going to get to the actual center of it because, again, remember something. When you're, um, you have floor plans on top of each other, even sections or whatever, when you flip those pages through, the viewport shouldn't move this way and this way. And I've worked for companies that, um, you know, they do all sorts of things. They have their title blocks with all these grid lines on it that they have set up so that you can make sure that the edge of the buildings line up. Because that's these, these, these folks that actually trace this on paper and give it to you to document in the computer may take their overlay and put it over your drawing and they say, well, how this isn't lining up? And these have to line up from sheet to sheet. You can't have one to the left, one to the right. It's like the cartoon, dog ear. You have to be able to flip all the pages and it really should stay still and not deviate back and forth. Uh, I guess a good example of that is horizontal and vertical hold on a television set. Same concept. It's horizontal and vertical hold, and that's what we have to maintain. And it's, it's exactly what we're doing. Horizontal and vertical hold, and tint and hue, and uh, all that. It is, it's all that. It is synonymous with that. Um, you're formatting. The following feature film has been formatted to fit your screen. What do you think you're doing? Anyway, anyway. We'll get some popcorn if you're bored. Okay, so that's the first one. You can then drag the view across the sheet to place it where you'd like to have it, which in this case is centered at the top of the sheet, and that's a very ambiguous statement. It's not centered. It looks like it is, but it's not. The only way this would be centered is if I drew a line from here to here, and from here to here, and it's the same thing here to here, and here to here, and where those two ver vertexes intersected, uh, that's where the center would be. Right? That's where the center would be. And I'm not doing that right a second. This is something else. There's another way of doing that. Now, when views are placed on sheets, they are referred to as viewports. Anyone knows anything about AutoCAD knows what a viewport is. Select the view you just placed on the sheet and look at the properties palette. Expand it a little bit. I can grab the edge. Look at the properties palette. The instance properties of the viewport are actually the view properties of that view. These properties can be modified at any time in the properties palette for a viewport that is in place on a sheet. A viewport also has, excuse me, also has type properties that determine the view title family, the visibility of the view title, and the formatting of the optional title extension line. We discuss viewport management with greater detail in Chapter 21, Presenting Your Design. Um, and again, that is, if we come down here, we'll take a look. Um, view name, title on sheet, all of that. Um, is right here. So now let's just leave that like that. We're going to be discussing it in greater detail in chapter 21, which is right around the corner. And if I could stop deviating from center, um, I'll be able to get through this a lot faster. So I appreciate if you stayed with me. I know uh, uh, the patience. I'll push. I'll, I'll test your patience. I will test your patience. Uh, but uh, once the degaussing um, is. Once the remnant magnetic field splits from the, the external uh, uh, stressors, then you'll see. It's a whole different ball game. In the office, I hide it well. After placing the view on the sheet, you'll notice that the purple area boundary lines are still visible. They're not because they're turned off in the view. I can turn them back on if you'd like. Um, I can go and go to the view of the area plan, right? Oops, I can go back to the view and go to the visibility graphics. If there's no template assigned to it, visibility graphics and go to lines, right? All the boundary lines, area boundary, the purple area boundary lines are visible. Right now they are. 
Okay, so you'll notice that they're uh, still visible. If you print the sheet at this point, the software will print those lines as thick black lines that border your floor plate. This may be undesirable, so you need to do some view management to turn those lines off. One way you can do this is by activating the area plans in the project browser and working within the view itself. Since you have the view already established on the sheet, there's no reason to go back to the original view, which I just did, when you can work on it directly through the sheet. So let's undo it and let's do exactly what it says. Right click the view on the sheet and choose activate view. Right click the view, activate view, and choose activate view from the context menu. You can also double click it, you can also double click a view based a uh, place on a sheet to activate it. As you can see, the, uh, the, the title block screens out, as does the, the uh, detail label. Okay, activating a view. Activating a view is like working in model space through a paper space viewport, and we've all done that. Any AutoCAD uh, player has done that. I know it has AutoCAD software. You're working on the actual view, but you're doing so while it's placed on the sheet. And again, it's pretty, pretty uh, good way of doing it. Um, but some folks don't ever work in paper space. They work in model space and scale up the title block 96 times. You know, if it's going to be eighth inch scale or 48 times, it's going to be quarter inch scale, which is another way of doing it. But some folks still do it that way. They, um, you know, a lot of these 2D drafting firms they don't necessarily need all these bells and whistles, and that'll work fine for them. Um, they don't use model space and paper space. And a lot of folks they used to hate when they got my drawings because I utilize model space and paper space. Um, and sometimes it's more it's more of a pain in the butt than it's worth. But um, it's the advanced way of doing it. Just, you can, just, it's a very, um, I don't like, I, I like everything to be full size. In, in AutoCAD, you draw everything full size. And I don't really particularly like scaling anything up larger than it really needs to be. It, it, if it's 24 by 36, then it's 24 by 36. It's not 96 times that. It's not. It's not 48 times that. It's not 12 times that. It's not 24 times that. It's, it's just not working itself up the scale. I, I don't do it like that. And again, you can, don't get me wrong, and if that's the office standard, then I'll conform. But it's just not the way I do it. It's not my style. Yeah, so by activating it, you're working on the actual view, but you're doing so while it's placed on the sheet. This gives you the benefit of seeing how changes to the view will affect the layout of the view on the sheet. For example, it could be undesirable to enlarge the crop window for the view to show more information on the sheet. Doing so will take a valuable sheet real estate and should be balanced by the amount of space the other views on the sheet need. You'll also notice that once the view is activated, all the surrounding materials, the sheet and any other views, turn gray. This is to alert you to the fact that you are working in the view and are not active on the sheet. In this view, however, you want to make some modifications to the visibility and turn off the area boundaries so they're not visible when you print. To do this, open the visibility graphic overrides dialog box by pressing VG on your keyboard or navigating to the command via the context menu. So VG, let's practice our shortcut keys because you know I don't. Okay, you know I'm going to stop there for a second. I heard something interesting today that uh, there's a computer program out there that can tell when you're frustrated on the computer by the way you move your mouse. It can determine your mood, whether you're frustrated, whether you're tired, whether you're attentive, whether you're awake, whether you're stoned, whether you're high. The computer program algorithm can determine your health by the way in which you're navigating on the screen. But keep in mind, with these ads that pop up when you're surfing the web, where you look, where these ads are placed, or where you're going to go. <laughs> so please, advertise responsibly. I don't want my children picking all over God's creation, going to the most ridiculous places in the world. I've been looking at TikTok. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> As anyone. So I, I want to go and just Windex their screens to get some of these ridiculous characters off the screen. But hopefully your children are well within their faculties and are indoctrinated by some of the silliness that's going on in the world this day, these days. In any event, there's no room for ridiculous propaganda in my class. So please, leave it out of the classroom. And I'll try as well. There's things you're not supposed to talk about in, 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 in social circles. Uh, sex, religion, and politics, right? Is that the rule of thumb? Sex, religion, and politics? Okay, so now... Yeah, visibility graphics. 
um, we could control the display of those boundary lines. In the visible graphics overrides dialog box, pan down in the model tab activated by the default and choose the lines node. Uncheck the box for area boundaries and click OK. The boundary lines should disappear from the view, and they have. Now you're ready to get out of the activation mode and add some additional views to the sheet. To do this, right-click anywhere within the view and choose Deactivate View from the context menu. You can also double-click outside the viewport to deactivate the view. So you can double-click out here, or you can right-mouse-click and deactivate view, or you can just double-click and you're out of the deactivation mode. You can see the, uh, the title block turns back to its original um, black color. Okay, now, um, a bin manager's note, deactivating, uh, deactivating active views. Keep, them in, keep the following in mind. Once you activate a view and complete your edits, you must deactivate it. As you can see on the sheet, activating views gray out the surrounding sheet context. If you were to print at this point, the sheet would print as gray with only the activated view showing in black. If you wanted to save some ink, to deactivate a view, you can do one of the three things. You can click Deactivate View from the Context Ribbon, from the Context Ribbon, right? You can do it from the, well, like we already did it, but you can, let me double click on it. You can deactivate it from the Context Ribbon. You can right click the mouse and choose Deactivate View from the Context Menu. Or you can simply double click outside of the view area. Really? There it is. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was in the view area. And that's pretty much it. So it was a little bit ver verbatim. Now, with the view on the sheet, you will want to make some other adjustments to help clean up the sheet layout a bit. One thing you will want to do is modify the view's title location and length. To do this, and this used to trip me up a little bit. Um, this could be a pain in the butt. It's very frustrating. To do this, select the viewport. And the view title will, act, uh, will, um, will activate the view title, right? With the view title active, you'll notice the blue grip at the end of the title line. By grabbing and dragging the grip, you can shorten the view title. Press the escape key or click the modify button in the upper left corner in the ribbon to deselect the viewport. So you can grab this, because some folks like it like right over here, right? So if you have anything, you know, and, and believe it or not, that's how I prefer it. It's just a preference of mine. It's a preference. It just looks a little neater. It's a, it's a waste of ink, right? It's a waste of ink. It's a waste of ink. Now, select the view, it's the view title itself. Now, see, there's two ways of doing this. Select the view, selecting the viewport will, will activate the grips. Selecting the title itself Graze everything out, right? Let's we'll do it again. Selecting the title itself. Now you have just the title. Viewport, viewport one. You still have the um, the properties palette, uh, the properties of the view port, the viewport. But now you only have the title selected. So now select the view title itself, not the viewport, and then click and drag the title closer to the view itself. That's pretty much what it says to do. That's all it says to do. But let's now click this. Let's drag this over. And now we're saving, we're saving space. If you go to my standard annotation scaling parameter spreadsheet that I have on that hodgepodge of that PowerPoint presentation, you'll see that there is a, a, a certain area on this paper. Let's pretend there's no title block on it. The area is 22 by 17, right? But at, at a certain scale, it's no longer that, right? At eighth inch scale, it's exponentially larger because we're, we're, we're working in scale. So if one inch equals a foot, you understand my point, right? If one inch equals a foot, you have 12 feet for every inch. So you have a certain, only a certain amount of real estate. Uh, uh, it's not infinite. It's not infinite amount of real estate on this piece of paper uh, because of the fact that you have to be able to see things in, in the right detail. and. Um, Again, that goes without saying, right? So if you can maximize as much as you can, you'll be doing two things. You'll be uh, efficiently saving ink for your firm, and you'll be saving space on the sheet. Okay, so now, 
Using grids, now this is where I, I said getting this thing centered, this is where this is all going to help. If you have multiple planes, elevations, or sections that need to be placed at the same location on a series of sheets, right, the grid, uh, the guide grid command can help you manage this. Uh, guide grids are non-printing grids that can be associated with sheets. And, and this is how this software addressed all the shortcomings uh, and, and, and automated a lot of the features that you had to actually manually do in AutoCAD to get it to this state. And, 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 and Autodesk realized that. It, and it addressed it and said, well, okay, well, this obviously is a, a lucid, more concise, logical, and reasonable way to uh, make it easier on the user. Uh, the user. Um, okay, so, yeah, if you have multiple planes, elevations, or sections that need to be placed at the same location on a series of sheets, the guide grid command can help you manage this. Guide grids are non-printable grids that can be associated with sheets. The grids allow you to snap or align elements such as reference planes, other grids, or crop regions to specific locations relative to the sheet border. You can create as many unique grid, uh, guide grids as required in a Revit project. First, activate the Geo 101 sheet to establish your first grid, uh, guide grid. Complete the following exercise before placing the next area plan on a new sheet. From the View tab in the ribbon, select Guide Grid from the Sheet Composition panel. Sheet composition guide grid. Hold on, let's read the tool tip. Guide grid. Creates a new guide element in the active sheet to help align elements within and between sheets. To display the same guide grid in different sheet views, set the guide grid sheet property in each sheet to the name of the desired grid guide grid. Levels, grids, reference planes, model, crop boundaries, and schedule extents are valid references. Now, it's almost the same as hitting F7 on the keyboard in AutoCAD when you're in model space. Right? Or in paper space, you can have a grid, right? Adaptive grids, all sorts of grids in, in uh, AutoCAD. Um, however, it exists within the model space viewport, right? If you remember, you're looking in and through the paper into the model space viewport, and you'd see the grid. Now, but can you get that grid to line up with the grid on the paper? And there, a lot of folks put in small little nodes and points and lines and line it all up and orthographically project the sides of the building down. Let's just say, for example, you have two, you have four elevations. Four elevations on a sheet. You have the north, south, east, and west. Well, the north and the south, let's say it's a linear building and they line up exactly. They're 150 feet um, long, this building elevation. 150 feet, let's just say. And uh, you have the north and south on the same sheet. Well, they have to line up. The, the edges of the building have to line up. Let's say the property line, for sake of argument. And they have to line up. And I've been through an exercise in AutoCAD LT where, uh, I'm not going to get into it. Trust me, it's built for this. You need to line those up, just like you would in the east and west elevation. They have to line up uh, so that when they put their overlays on them, they, they, they line up. I mean, we are working with folks that are still using the antiquated method. So you have to conform to the fact that they still do it the old-fashioned way. A lot of these architects, you know, they're so set in their ways with how they do it, and it works. And it's been working from eons, right? So what are you going to do? Sorry, uh, no, learn AutoCAD. You, you can't tell them that because they're architects. And they know a lot more about architecture than you do as a draftsman. So you have to conform with the workflow of the, the company's culture. It doesn't necessarily mean it's efficient anymore. It just means that if you want to keep your job, that's what you have to do. Or if you want to be like me and tell them, well, you know what? Well, you don't say anything. You just sit there and wait for your check because you're not expediting it fast enough with the software platform that they've given you. You got to remember something. You go into an office. You have to subscribe. If you're not paying for the subscription, you're going to utilize the subscription that they're paying for. So the platform they're using, you're going to have to use it. And I'm not really big on using AutoCAD LT. I'll be honest with you. Not anymore. And I sure as shit won't be using AutoCAD for electrical uh, layout and design ever again. You can take that to the bank. So if you're still doing that, and they are, they are, and they get hired... I don't know if, if, if there's literally, uh, it goes beyond my understanding how a draftsman can operate in this industry as a 2D draftsman anymore, but they're still there. And I blame it on, on management. They just don't know any better. They just don't know any better. And if they're, if they're slick and they just shut their mouth, they can last a long time. Maybe they can, they can, they can hide. It's all smoke and mirrors, man. I'm not going to name names. This came from a few companies where they clueless. <laughs> I just came from a company where was one dude, he was turning beet red, he was in his 20s. It's going to be time for him soon. You can tell it's starting to take its toll. You can see them heat up. 
you can see, you can see the up, and I know because I've been through it. I've, uh, and this kid puts you into a state of hysteresis when you're under the gun. It can put you into a state of hysteresis, and you'll start to heat up. And you'll take it home. You'll take that heat home, you know. Or if you are, uh, if you're cognizant of it, you won't. You'll find a way to uh, to keep that from happening. Now, okay, before I go off on a tangent again, let's um, let's continue on. Uh, yeah, so um, using the grid lines. Okay, so if we hit the grid line, you see here we got choose existing, see sheet area plans, or create new. Right. So let's just see what the text has to say. Um, from the view tab in the ribbon, select guide grid from the sheet composition panel. Name the new grid C sheet area plans, and you can see it's already done for us. When you see the grid appear on the sheet, select it and look at the properties palette. Change the spacing to three inches, so it's 75 millimeters. Well, isn't that fantastic? It goes a little over the extents of the sheet of paper, right? So if we select the grid, which we can, sheet area pl uh, guide grids, uh, C sheet area plans, can you select the individual grid lines within it? No. Not right now, but you can see it's relatively simple. You can't really edit the type, but you can edit the name and you can edit the spacing. Now, unfortunately, or at least from the from the initial overview, um, it would be nice if it could be vertical and horizontal, right? You can actually make grids you know, three inches in the X and then maybe two inches in the Y. But let's see. If, well, I'm sure we could create our own grid that does that with a parameter. Let's just hold off and see what it says. Change the spacing to three inches, which it already is. <coughs> Select the outer, uh, the outer boundary of the grid guide, the guide grid. It's one of those words. Say it ten times fast. Select the outer boundary of the guide grid and activate the move command. Press MV on the keyboard. MV. Snap to one of the grid intersections within the guide. Hit MV again, see what happens. There it is. Ah, so once we activate the command. Ah, so I see, says the blind man. So one of the grid intersections within the guide and then move it to the upper left intersection of the inner sheet border. Select the outer boundary of the guide grid and activate the move command. Snap to one of the grid intersections within the guide and then move it to the upper left intersection of the inner sheet border. Is it saying to select one of the intersections of the guide grid and move it to the inner sheet of the border. Are they saying to put it there? Okay, well, I put it there. It doesn't look like it's equidistant. I would, I would feel much better if this was equidistant, if this line and this line, like an acoustical ceiling tile, right? I don't want to have to have a fraction of a ceiling tile uh, at the end of the room. It would look ridiculous. So it's the same kind of concept. Uh, in any event, let's see what it says. When you place the grid guide and the spacing of the grid itself will depend on exactly how you plan to use it. In our example, we need to identify only a single common point to which we rely on our area plans. The location of the boundary of the grid is not important. The boundary cannot be snapped to. Access the view properties of the sheet and scroll down to find the guide grid property. Make sure to set to C sheet area plans. View properties of the sheet. Let's grab the sheet. Let's take a look. Hold on a second. Take a look here. Uh, grid guide property. Does anyone see it? I don't see it. Grid guide property. Uh, I don't see it. Sheet number, sheet number. Am I missing it? Sheet drawn, check. Mm -hmm. Uh, path. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Let me see something. Is the parameter not there? Am I missing it? Did I miss something? Select the area plan. Oh, the area plan. Was that what it said? No, no, no. It said select the uh, sheet itself. That's what it said, right? I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Select the... Uh... Oh, you know what? I screwed up. I screwed up. Hold on. Hold on. Rome wasn't built in a day. Hold your horses, Mike. Hold your horses. Select the area plan already placed on the sheet and activate the move command. I move the grid. I'm a silly man. Uh, but let me see something. It's still not equidistant. Like with, with AutoCAD, you can um, actually 
set the limits in model space and then have the grids, the grid extend to the limits of the paper. So let's just say your limits are 36 by 48. Then your grid could be set to 36 by 48 and then your paper could be set maybe a quarter inch in or from the top and bottom so that you're, you're printing to the layout to the, to the limits, but your paper is going to be offset from those limits so that you have uh, a margin around and you can put things in the margin. Like me, for example. I'm one of those gentlemen that are bleeding, full bleed in margin. <laughs> Taking this to the next level. Full bleed in margin. Okay, so it does say select the area plan. The area plan. Place on sheet G101. Activate the move command. Snap to the intersection of the two reference planes visible in the plan. Well, I don't see any reference planes visible in the plan. So, as usual, I'm going to, I don't see a reference plane here, do you? I don't, wait, is that, no, no, I don't see a reference plane. Two reference planes, I see the room delineation line. Let's just double check, let's double check our math. Let's act, let's go to the view, let's go to the visibility graphics, let's go to lines, and I want to take a look here. Uh, area boundary, no. Um, would be on the reference lines, maybe? Hold on. Hold that thought. Reference lines, reference planes. So turn us on for a second. Take a look. Ah, oh, there they are. Again, it, the book trips you up a little bit sometimes. You gotta really investigate it. Uh, select the area plane or replace on G101 and activate the move command. Step to the intersection of the two reference planes visible in the plan and then to a nearby intersection on the guide grid. So s s activate that. Oops. Activate the, the uh, viewport, initiate the view command, go to one of the intersections of the reference planes, and then bring it to the grid line. That's too far, right? That's too far. It's, uh, let's get it over here. Let's bring it down to this one. Okay, now, that's a little more intuitive than AutoCAD. Having to place a node in model space and then put one in pacers, paper space, what a ridiculous concept. But there's other ways around that. And again, this with match lines, think about this with match lines. If you've got a building that is a uh, thousand feet long and you're putting it on multiple sheets and you're using match lines, like at the airport, for example, you know how difficult that is to do in model space? We have uh, the entire building in model space, thousand feet. And at, at, a, at three inch of an inch equals a foot, each of those viewports are going to show a certain level of detail of that thousand foot building. So it's going to require multiple sheets. So one of the first things that the uh, Delta Sky team asked me for was my key plan, my key plan. And this is where this plays very, very heavily into this. Uh, in, in larger projects, you'll have a key plan in your title block, and each sheet will be in a sector of that key plan. And it uh, could very well be that it's named um, A1, B, A1, A2, A3, A4, B1, B2, B3, B4. And, and that was a submittal. I had to submit my key plan. I emulated the one they already had. But the thing is, those match lines, uh, when you have to uh, um, match the uh, sheets up, it becomes uh, very, uh, very difficult. And there are lots of ways to do it. And I learned the hard way that the way I was employing it in prior project wasn't the correct way of doing it. And I spent so much time, whereas knowing full well that the software, this software platform does it so much easier. But again, I wasn't hired. I wasn't hired to change their organizational uh, engineering structure. I was hired to go in and design the distribution system for the LaGuardia Airport new terminal. I wasn't in there to change their culture, but the culture needs to be changed. I uh, left some mental notes for them to follow in any event. <laughs> what a trip. All right, so um, I met some really good guys, so I won't name any names. All right, so we got this uh, We got this going. Let's continue on, because you know me. I'll go off on a tangent. We got to get through this. This is a long video. Now, note that some traditional modifying methods do not work with guide grids. For example, you cannot use the align command. Okay, well, we won't try. Right? We won't try to use the align command. We can't say, okay, well, align, um, pick this. Let's say pick uh, this to move to and move the uh, the entire viewport to it. It'd be nice, but it doesn't work. Like a wall would do, like a wall would work. So we made a note of that. If you haven't already done so, 
Create a new sheet using the G102 Level 2 Area Plan placeholder in the Properties Palette. Make sure the grid, uh, guide grid is specified and note that it is now in the exactly is note that it is now in exactly the same location on the as on the previous sheet. Hmm. Let's read that again. That's powerful. If you haven't already done so, create a new sheet using the G102 Level 2 Area Plan placeholder in the Properties Palette. Make sure the guide make sure the guide grid is specified and note that it is now in exactly the same location as on the previous sheet. Well, it's created for us. Now where's the guide grid on the uh, there it is. The guide grid is C sheet area plans. Well I haven't put it on here yet, right? I haven't put it on here yet. Let's turn this off for a second. I'm gonna hit none. And I'm just gonna uh, see what happens when I drag in a level two area plan. So I deleted it from here. Let's try drag in level two area plan. Let's just put it there for a second. Place it. Now, if I put in, if I, um, um, I'm, now I'm looking at the viewport. If I select the sheet, and I, I don't have the option anymore of selecting the guide grid. That's what I couldn't find before, right? So it was before the fact. It was before the fact. So let's now put the guide grid back on. See sheet plans. Let's drag it in and see what happens. Now it says, notice that it's in the exact same place. Let's tell our views. Now it's ZA. It appears to be. Let's go to this view, right? Let's turn on guide grid. In this view. I don't, how come the guide grid isn't coming on? Hold on. Hold that bullet. Choose existing C sheet, C sheet area plans. Uh, guide grid. It's not on. Watch it be a visibility graphic setting. Watch it be a visibility graphic setting. Let me take a look. Let me just double check. See if it's, it work, if it's under annotations. Guide, guide grid, it's off, see? Sometimes you have to do this and sometimes it's nested. Sometimes you'll go into visibility graphics, the box will be checked, and you still won't see it. And that is one of the most frustrating things. It happens a lot. And then you have to dig down to the Reddit visibility hierarchy pyramid, and you spend 20 minutes trying to figure out what is overriding the visibility of this particular element. Why am I not seeing it? Why am I seeing it? When it says it's turned off or it says it's turned on, and then you add into the mix that there's a linked model and it gets even more perplexing. So it can be a very frustrating endeavor. It can be, but it's not insurmountable. It's not insurmountable. Anyone who knows me and knows what I've been through, and again, I'm not, you know, crying me a river. I'm not trying to, I'm not over the sympathy boat. Let me tell you something. Um, it, it can be a very frustrating endeavor, putting into practice. And, and, and lots of folks, they, they fall by the wayside. So there it is. Now, um, does it look like it's in the exact same place? Well, the grid is, but notice that the uh, view isn't, right? The view isn't. So we would have to, again, turn on the reference lines, drag it over the grid, but at least we have a grid to align it. Now, it does say, it does say, in the properties palette, make sure the guide grid is specified and note that it is now in exactly the same location on, as on the previous sheet. Well, the guide grid is, but the area plan isn't. Drag the level two usable area plan onto the sheet, then use the move command to adjust the location of the plan to the same location as on the previous sheet. Note that only crop regions and datum objects will snap to the guide grids. Therefore, you may need to activate the area plans and enter reveal hidden elements mode in the view control bar. This will temporarily display reference planes in the exercise file, deactivate the view, and move the viewports into alignment with the guide grid. Well, you know what? That would be another way of doing it, right? If indeed you don't see the guide, uh, the reference planes within the view itself, activate the view, right? Activate the view. View control bar. Reveal hidden elements. Well, there they are. So now, within the context of doing that, we can then uh, deactivate, well, if we deactivate the view, right, deactivate the view, the temporarily hidden elements still show. We could still now go to the modify command, invoke the move command, go to the reference plane intersection. Oops, well, sometimes it's, it, you have to select, you select the view, go to move, and now I'll get to snap point that I want, and then move it to where we want it. And that one over there is basically right over, well, get to the right spot. Make sure you get to the guide grid in the section, put it there. So only datum objects, right? Reference planes and datum objects. 
Um, you won't be able to do it like by a wall. And I'll tell you, you'll know how why, how folks are doing this thing. You'll start to see uh, when they're doing it the wrong way in AutoCAD. You'll notice on the drawing, and yet you'll see circles with crosshairs, and they'll usually put them at uh, column intersections, or they'll put them on the edge of walls. And you can tell what they're doing. They're trying to line things up. They're trying to line things up. Where's the base point? Where's the base point? Where's the base point? Well, it's an exercise in futility is what it is. And I fell victim to that. So I'm telling you from experience, I've spun my wheels before. i spun my wheels before, and it's not, it's not intuitive. It's not conducive to the, uh, the overall workflow. And again, you're under the gun, man. You're under the gun in this industry. You've got to produce, and it's got to be expedited quickly, not, um, not at a snail's pace. And, and, and you know, all these older folks that are riding their retirement out into the, uh, the golden years, they're, they're, they're all comfortable and they don't care. They don't care. You know, they, they've been doing it for the same way for 30 years and they're not going to change now. I, I tested that theory. They don't, they're not going to change. This isn't for them. And they never wanted to go back to school. Okay, now. The deactivate the view and move the viewports into alignment with the guide grid. Beautiful, beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this passage and this exercise is trying to, to uh, uh, explain to us. If you haven't noticed already, model views of the same scale will always snap to each other without any special grids. What you might not realize is that this always works between views of different types as long as they are of the same scale. For example, you can drag any elevation from the project browser onto sheet 102 and see how it snaps in relation to the plan. Sections can also be aligned with ele elevations and with plans. Even 3D views can be aligned with each other. Let's hold that thought. It's saying that if, indeed, I took a building section, let's take a building section, I take section 1, and I drag it over here, it's saying it'll snap, and it sure will, it'll snap, if you, if you can see it magnetically, snap over to uh, line up the uh, viewport. Let's undo that. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Now, we're going to be adding the schedule. We're almost done. I know this is going long. Maybe I should stop it here. Now, we're one page, and then we're at the bottom line. Let me go through it. So just persevere. I'll let you go on your smoke break or your coffee break. Just give it a minute. Trust me, this will benefit you. Um, give me a second. We'll get through this. I won't, I won't deviate. Adding the schedule. With the uh, largest view, adding the schedule, with the largest view, the area plan on the sheet, you can use the bottom portion of the sheet to lay out your other views. For the second view, let's add the area schedule you created. To do this, drag and drop it from the project browser in much the same way you added the area plan. The inserted view will look like figure 18.30. You'll notice some differences in how this view looks from the way your schedule looks when it's not on a sheet. Specifically, you can now see the header text and the fonts you chose in the schedule properties. You'll also be able to see the grid lines and their associated line weights from the appearance tab of the schedule properties. Area usable. You'll now see the font and the grid lines that you uh, created. When with the schedule on the sheet, it looks a bit tight. You have the ability to re redefine the column. It doesn't really look a bit tight, but it says that it does. You have the ability to redefine the column spacing so you can make any visual adjustments to the schedule while it's on the sheet. To help it read better, these adjustments do not change the actual schedule, just its appearance on the sheet. To do this, highlight the schedule by selecting it. The schedule will turn blue, and you'll have a few new grips to help you make adjustments. Excuse me. The blue inverted triangles will allow you to modify the column widths. Grab them and drag them left to right to change the column sizing. That's helpful. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing to save real estate. As a matter of fact, there's a vertical, hmm, look at that, huh? There's a vertical uh, region crop, right? Vertical region crop, remember from the uh, section we had? 
Is there a horizontal one? Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see where it cuts it. Major vertical penetration. If I drag this down, you can see you have an option. So this is going to be a way that you could um, fit this on a sheet. You have a lot of information on there. Now, perfect example. <coughs> um, detail views. You can fit lots of detail views on the sheet. I mean, you see, you've seen sheets that you have like 16, 18 views on one sheet. Especially in wall details. Wall details, you're going to maximize the uh, real estate on your sheet, especially in wall details. You can get as many of them. You want to get as many of those on one sheet as possible. And you don't want to waste paper. This paper is expensive, right? All right, so we added the schedule there. Grab them and drag them from left and right to change the column sizing. You also notice a blue cut symbol on the schedule. This cut symbol lets you break the schedule into multiple vertical columns on the same sheet. This tool can be especially handy if you have a long schedule, like a room schedule or a door schedule, and it has too many rows to fit vertically on your sheet. Selecting this tool will break the schedule in half, and you can break it into half again and again, so that you can take advantage of the horizontal real estate. If you choose to separate your schedule in this fashion, it will still retain all the necessary information. And all the, the portions will continue to automatically fill themselves out dynamically as a single schedule would. You also have the opportunity to change the overall height of the schedule once it is broken up by grabbing the grips at the bottom of the schedule and dragging up and down. Doing so will draw or push arrows, will push rows from the adjacent schedule portion so that all of your information is continuous. To rebuild a split schedule, essentially returning to a single list, select the schedule on the sheet so it highlights and the grips are displayed. Click one of the move icons and drag the split portion on top of the other schedule segment. The split schedule will then become whole again. And we did that, I'll do it again. So grab that, split it, bring this back over. I split it three ways, right? Grab the move and bring it back over and it becomes complete again. How cool is that? Right? See if I can get it over where it's supposed to be. Ah! I, I, I butchered it. I butchered it. I never should have did it that way. Hold on. Let's try it this way. Let me go back this way and do it. Do it this way. It's saying drag this and get it back over there. There. Is that the right? Is that conducive of it? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty intuitive. And that's important. Now, finishing the sheet. Now that you have those two views on the sheet, it is a simple matter to add the remaining view. To add the wall legend you created, you will drag and drop it from the project browser into, in much the same way you did with the other two views. In this case, the wall legend came into the sheet need, needing little modification, completing sheet G102. So the legend, just grab that, let me zoom out. I'm not 100% sure this is gonna fit, but we're gonna see. I'm not happy with it. Let's get it in there. It's not bad. No, I'll live. I can live with that. This probably could go up a little higher, but then, again, I move it here, I gotta move it on the other sheets. But for uh, this particular exercise, I'm just gonna hold it there for a second. Again, I'm not particularly happy with these horizontal um, viewport uh, designators. So, you know, I wanna get these puppies down like that. And again, you'll see, there's no revision number on this. Uh, because there is a revision, uh, and we're going to get to that in documenting your design. But that's pretty much it. This probably should move over here a little bit, right? That's not a very good location for that. And again, we can move this up a little bit, get a little more. So I would probably have this more centered that way. That looks a little better. But again, we have to do that on this sheet. And then there it is. Uh, that's, pretty much, um, that's pretty much it. Now, the bottom line. Document plans. With floor plans, you can create visual graphics that help you define how a space is laid out. However, Revit provides other tools such as area plans to help you describe space. Master it. List the four types of area plans that you can create and note that uh, note the two that Revit creates automatically. Create schedules and legends. Schedules are another view type. They allow you to show information about the model in a non-graphic format. Schedules can also be used to dynamically report quantities of elements inside the model. Master it. Understand how to create schedules and report additional information about the elements in the model. How would you create a simple casework schedule showing quantities of types? Lay out sheets. Eventually, in a project, it will become necessary to create sheets that will become the documentation set. Knowing how to create a good sheet set provides you with another venue to communicate with contractors, clients, and other team members. Master it. 
So to properly create a sheet set, you need to understand the dynamics of adding views to a sheet. In the Revit environment, there is only one way to add sh views to a sheet. What is it? Well, that's for the, the, uh, the other um, digital mic to answer. Uh, chapter 19, Allocating Your Design is next. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We still have a bunch to get to, but we're, uh, we're getting there. It's been a long road, and I probably could have did this a bit sooner um, if I didn't try to get it onto, uh, if I didn't try to master it onto an LP at 78 speed or 33 speed. But um, mastering Revit can be difficult, and we haven't yet, but we're, uh, we endeavor to uh, persevere through the process, right? So um, I'll see you at the next video. Bring coffee. Please.